Hey guys, what's up? I've got some photography equipment here which is on the uh, table ready for modifying. It's a, a W228 model LED video lighting. It's a uh, light panel, continuous light panel with camera mount and filters. Uh, there's actually no filter panels, but what I think they mean is you can actually alter the uh, color temperature. You've got two dials on the side and if you look carefully, you might be able to see that the uh, picture shows two slightly different colored uh, LEDs there. That's because you've got cool white and warm white and uh, we can vary the amount of each type of LED and you can kind of tune the, uh, the color temperature to what you need. So this thing is, uh, what do we got, 228 LEDs, uh, hence the, uh, the name, I guess that means white 228 for the W228. 20 watt output, beam angle is 90 degrees, good for 50,000 hours, 2,000 lumens and the color temperature is 6,000 Kelvin with a color rendering index of greater than 85%. So it's not too bad. Um, the color temperature, like I said, is actually uh, uh, tunable. So that will be a, a nominal value, I believe. So I've actually already taken it out of the packet and we've got it here. And uh, yeah, you can, if I hold up, you might be able to see a bit better the, uh, the two different colors of the phosphors. You got like an orange and then a yellow. But the problem is, it uses a Sony style battery, and I don't have Sony equipment, I've got a Canon camera. Um, I used to have a Sony, uh, like a prosumer camera, many years ago, but I don't have that anymore, so I can't actually use this. Uh, this was given to me by my brother, by the way, he uses these for his uh, setup when he's uh, doing his videos on our channel. But he uh, gave me one of these to play with, uh, so I'm going to probably convert it away from this uh, Sony battery connector, and uh, maybe... I was thinking we'll put a micro USB plug in there. First we've got to figure out how much power this thing draws. If it's more than 2 amps it may be a bit difficult to supply the power over USB because most uh, power supplies are rated to 2 amps. But we'll measure that and if it is under 2 amps we'll um, put the micro USB in there and uh, we'll better just run it off a USB power supply. If not, if it is over 2 amps I'll just put like a DC jack. Now. The thing is, these batteries, they actually uh, are 7.2 volt, the Sony batteries. So, there's either one of two ways we're going to have to go. One is, we might put a, uh, a boost converter inside to boost from the 5 volts up to the 7.2 volts this is expecting. Or there may be a boost converter in there which we can play with or hook into that will uh, do the job for us anyway. But, that remains to be seen once we get this thing open. Now, on the side there, you can see the two, uh, the two dials. There for the two different colored LEDs, the uh, warm white and the cool white LEDs, and then there's a power switch as well. And on the back we've got a uh, LED indicator for the uh, the battery level, so it'll light up 1, 2, 3, and 4 as you go from, I guess, 25, 50, 75, and 100% battery level. And yeah, LEDs on the front, battery on the back, and just it comes with this uh, kind of a cheap little, uh, like a hot shoe, cold shoe, whatever little mount to stick on top of your camera. So let's tear this thing open, see what's inside and see how we can modify it. Oh, hang on a sec. Look at this. Oh, I love this. I love it. Oh, yeah. Nice and shiny. That's got to be the best part of opening a new product, peeling off all the plastic protecting film. All right, let's get this thing open and uh, see what we can find inside. I'll have a bit of a poke at it. And I'll be uh, back in just a sec. Okay, so I managed to uh, figure out where all the screws are. you got just got to take the uh, plastic kind of screen or the cover there off. I just used a, uh, like a craft knife or a scalpel, X-Acto knife, and just kind of slid it in and slowly peeled it open. Uh, if you use a hairdryer, it's, it's double-sided sticky tape, so if you use a hairdryer, it'll loosen that up a bit and come off a bit nicer. But yeah, I got off all in one piece, so let's take a few of these screws out and see what we've got inside. Alright, there we go. So, looks like we've got a couple of wires coming to our PCB. And then one of those will be the warm whites, and the, the other will be the cool whites, controlled by the two potentiometers here. Looks like we've got a, a, a boost control circuit of some description here. That will be providing a constant output to the LEDs, 
regardless of the uh, the input voltage. That way, as your battery goes flat, it won't dim down the LEDs. It just uh, m remains to be seen what the voltage that will work down to. If it does work down to 5 volts, that will be fantastic. If not, we might just have to put that little boost converter. We've got a bit of space just over here where we can put it in. So what we'll do is I'll remove the pins. These wires, they come through to the spring-loaded pins for the uh, battery terminals. We'll remove those, hook them up to the uh, power supply with the uh, multimeter, and we'll see what current it draws at, uh, at 7.2 volts at full brightness, and then we'll turn it down to 5 volts and see what happens. Alright, so we've got the uh, voltage coming in at 7.2 volts, just above that, 7.3-ish. So that's uh, about nominal for a fully charged battery, or averagely charged battery. And we're pulling about 2.3 amps at that voltage. So if we go down to 5 volts um, through a uh, boost converter, it's probably going to be uh, pulling a bit more than that. Because as the voltage drops, your current's got to come up to compensate for the same wattage, Ohm's law and all that. So uh, it may be a bit of a stretch to use a USB because 2 amps seems to be about the standard. Um, I might hook up a, uh, a boost converter and see what it draws at a 5 volts as that's boosting up to the 7.2 and then see what that see what that says and make a decision or I might just uh, use a, a buck converter which is taking the voltage down uh, from 12 volts down to uh, the uh, the 7.2 um, I'm gonna have another closer look at this circuit board as well and see if that maybe can um, handle 12 volts straight in maybe it could and then if that's the case uh, we won't even need any sort of uh, any sort of circuitry just put a uh, DC jack straight onto these wires and we're done. So um, bear with me, I'll be back in a sec and uh, we'll see what this says with a few other voltages being put in. Alright, so I had a bit of a play with the uh, the uh, boost converter, 5 volts up to uh, 7.2 or so, and it's a bit of a bust. The input current is a lot more than what a USB power supply, like a charger for your phone, whatever can supply. It needs something like 6 amps or 5 amps or something. So that's not any good, but I had a look at the chips on here, and they're actually an LA8303. There's two of them, one for each like uh, color of the LEDs. And they're actually a, a uh, step-down LED driver. Uh, 300 kilohertz is the frequency they operate at, and they're 2-amp, 23-volt rated thing. So the input voltage can be up to 23 volts. As you can see here, I've got it running on just under 12 volts, and it's pulling just under 2 amps, and it's working fine. Um, so I'm just going to wire the battery terminals, the wires, up to a DC jack, drill a hole, stick it in there, and I've got the uh, mating uh, female, or sorry, the male into the female plug here, so that will go to a 12 volt little switch mode power supply from something, like an old one, old salvage, uh, I only need it like 2 amps, so if I get a 12 volt 2.5 or even 3 amp or something, whatever I've got laying around, that'll work fine, so it looks like this is going to be an easy conversion after all, just DC jack, straight to the battery wires, straight in, no worries. Another interesting thing is they've actually got um, triple five timers and these are actually for the dimmer because these are uh, driver chips, they actually have an input where you can have an analog input or you can use a, uh, a PWM, pulse with modulated input. So as I turn these uh, dials, that's actually altering the uh, duty cycle, the the frequency coming out of the uh, the triple five, that's being fed into the uh, LED driver chip and then that's what's controlling our dimming. So yeah, it's a pretty neat little solution there. Two triple five ICs, two LED drivers, some inductors and capacitors and whatnot, and it's all working fine on 12 volts. So I'm going to go drill a hole, solder this up, and uh, we should be pretty much ready to put it back together. <laughs>
All right, so we're done. Now, don't make the mistake I just did. I looked at one power supply and it had a center negative. Uh, that's not the standard in general for uh, these DC power jacks. Usually it's center positive, so I just went ahead blindly and made center negative. That's the center pin in the, uh, in the socket and on the plug. And then once I got it together, I realized that's not the standard. I remembered that actually all the other power supplies I've got are center positive, and that's just the way things generally are. So I just opened it up and swapped it back and to, you know, to, from center negative to center positive, and now it all works fine. So I've got this power supply here. This is just a 12 volt one I got from a Kihabara for 400 yen, just a uh, surplus thing. Uh, 12 volts, 4.16 amps. Um, I could get away with a 2.5 amp ish. I wouldn't go down to 2 amp because you're going to be pushing the uh, the amount of power that this thing takes. So uh, two and a half amp would be a good a good starting point. But this one just happens to be four amp, so we got more than enough power. So if I uh, plug that in and I will switch it on, whoa, that that's really bright. Jeez, that's that's actually really good. That's maximum brightness. Oh, I can't even look at it. Can't even look at that thing. Okay, that's the uh, warm white. You can see it's kind of dimmed down because it's got less. I don't know if you can see that's gone a bit more orange. And then we've got cool white. Yeah, so it's working perfectly. Awesome. I might put that to use. Set it up here somewhere or... Get some more light on the screen. I'm just going to interject here with a small edit from the future. Ooh, I actually found out once I put this thing back together, which I'll do in a sec, um, that the chips are overheating. So I thought I'll drop this edit in just so that if you're following along, you'll um, do the things in the right sequence and not have to open it up a second time. Basically, it looks like that the driver chips, this one here and this one here, do on the outsides, they, um, they're running right on the edge of the thermal limits with the 7.2 volts. So putting up to 12 volts, it runs for about five or so minutes, and then the LEDs uh, turn off as these uh, have an internal over-temperature kind of uh, protection, and they just turn themselves off until they cool down, and then they'll turn back on. So to stop that from happening, because that's no good if it happens in the middle of a uh, video shoot, I cut up these uh, aluminium strips, and they're going to sit there as heat sinks. One up there, and one down there. So I just use some 1.2 mil aluminium, and uh, I just use my X-Acto knife to score you know, a piece off. And I just bent it and snapped it, come off nice and clean. And then I used my uh, nibbling tool here and just nibbled out to get the shape right. So you can kind of see the uh, approximate shapes. You can bend up your own if you're following along. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some... Uh, Arctic Silver Epoxy. It's kind of like the Arctic Silver that you normally use for your heatsink on your uh, CPU, but this is an epoxy version, and that will glue these down. And then I'll use some epoxy, maybe the same stuff, or just some standard epoxy. Depends on um, what I feel like, and that'll hold the other end just so they don't flap around in the breeze and break off. I also uh, ran these on some 800 grit uh, emery paper just to s flatten off the end and uh, give it a bit of a key so that the epoxy can bite in and really glue properly. So let's get some uh, of the epoxy. Mix it up and we'll stick these things down. So these are all in now. Epoxy at both ends so they're not going to uh, flap around or break off. I'll put some capped on tape here just to protect so that the uh, terminals here don't short out on the heatsink. But um, yeah, fits in there nicely. Shouldn't be a problem. So I'll uh, close it up and I'll return to your regular programming. Well, I hope you found that useful. It's uh, quite a nice light, I think. Um, really, really bright. And uh, it's a uh, quite versatile and once you put the uh, DC jack in the back fits in there quite nicely it's uh, a lot easier to use if you don't have those uh, Sony batteries I can just plug it in and use it for hours on end no problems whatsoever alright guys don't forget we got that patreon going keep watching the videos and we'll see you next time